Hello GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and today I've been asked to find the difference between the polynomials. So that stresses students out a little bit because these things look so gross. This is actually a pretty simple problem. It's a lot nicer than it looks. Um, if you can get past the visual of it, uh, you'll be okay. But I do want to point out a few things. First thing is it says to find the difference. Um, they're telling us to subtract, and we can see that we really are subtracting these two big ugly things. And then they tell us that we're finding the difference between polynomials. So um, I could get into a long discussion of what a polynomial is not is and isn't with you, but it wouldn't be very useful to this problem. So for the purposes of this problem, um, this algebraic expression with multiple terms here with more than one thing adding or subtracting is a polynomial okay uh, as is this so I'm subtracting these two polynomials and they helped me to see the two polynomials by enclosing them each in parentheses okay so pretty simple the hardest thing here is to realize that since this subtraction is shoved up against this parentheses we are going to be end up subtracting everything inside this parentheses and so it's going to be a little interesting how I deal with that and that's the first thing I'm going to deal with so I'm just going to drop down my first polynomial there's nothing shoved up against these parentheses so no change will be made by dropping these parentheses they weren't doing anything except grouping these three terms together. And we know that it doesn't matter what order you group terms in. The um, associative property tells us that groupings don't matter when it's just a bunch of things adding. Okay. However, I cannot just drop the second set of parentheses. Why? Because this set of parentheses had a minus sign shoved up against it, meaning that everything inside the parentheses is going to be subtracting. Or another way to think of it is it's going to be the opposite sign. Um, so um, some teachers even teach that when there's a minus shoved up here, it's like the whole thing is being multiplied by negative one. Because another way to think of subtracting is like uh, changing everything sign or multiplying everything by negative one. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is pass out the subtraction by changing everyone's signs. If I subtract negative 3x, subtracting a negative turns into a positive, and so I'm going to see a sign change. My negative 3x squared turns into a positive 3x squared. If I subtract positive 5x, again, um, that's going to change that from a positive 5x into a negative 5, 5x, and I see that have a sign change. And then same thing here. If I subtract a negative 8, um, or, um, it's going to end up changing its sign to a positive 8. And so basically, I can drop these parentheses, but it's important to see that this negative out here is going to change everybody's signs. The negative 3x turned into a positive. The positive 5x turned into a negative 5x, and the negative 8 turned into a positive 8. Great. Now that I got rid of those parentheses and dealt with that passing out that negative sign, all this is is a matter of combining like terms. Remember the basic rule of adding and subtracting in algebra. We can only put together the same kinds of things, just like always. We could always ever add and subtract the same kinds of things. In algebra, we tell if things are the same kinds of things. If their variable portion is the same, there's the variable portion of that term, x cubed. Here's the variable portion of that term, x. 17, of course, has no variable portion. It's a plain old regular number, and so on and so forth. So I am going to do what's called combining like terms. So first I'll start with this first term, the one with the highest exponent, 2x cubed. Do you see any other terms here that also have an x cubed, an x to the third power? Of course, if I look through here, no, this one just has a plain old x. This one doesn't have any x's at all. This one's an x squared. This one's a plain old x. That one doesn't have any x's at all. So there's nothing that will add or subtract with 2x cubed. So that is just my final answer for those x cubes. That's all I have. I only have two of them. And uh, I'm done with that. And I'm going to keep going like that. And, uh, and I will... Um, combine in the order of descending exponents. So I went from the exponent of 3, now I'll go to the next lower exponent. So I'm going to go to this one, x squared next. 
Now, again, are there any other like terms that can combine with x squared? Do you see any other x squares? No, I don't. And so this positive 3x squared has nothing it can add or subtract with. And so you just drop it, literally. And so that, that's really the hard part about this for students. It's, it's easier than it seems it should be. If things aren't like, we just don't add them. They just stay like that in our final answer. Okay, now I do have some plain old x's. You can see here I have negative 3x. And there is a like term with, there is a like term with negative 3x. There's a negative 5x. I know these are like terms because they both have x's. Their variable portion is the same. And so I can combine them. It's like I owe you three dollars and then I borrow five more dollars. Well, if I already owe you three X's and I borrow five more X's, um, I'm going to be in debt, in debt by eight X's. And notice I just end up combining the number portion, negative three minus five is negative eight. And uh, writing down the variable portion, I'm adding and subtracting X's so I still have X's. Great, done with that. And now, as always, I've always been able to add and subtract regular numbers. We call them constants uh, in polynomials, but still. Regular numbers at positive 17 plus 8 gives me positive 25. And this problem is done. I've combined all the like terms I could combine, and I'm done. This is really what separates my A students from my B students here. My A students know that they're done. They stop. My B students waste 10 to 15 minutes on a test trying to mush these numbers together in all kinds of impossible ways. There's literally nothing else I can do here. I cannot add and subtract anything else. And so this problem is as simplified as it's going to get. Okay, great. If you have any questions about that, be sure to drop them in the comments. I know this is a really tricky concept. If all the language I was using was super unfamiliar to you so that this problem was really confusing, I suggest you go back and watch the polynomial vocabulary uh, video that I have. It might help you to understand a little bit of the language. Um, other than that, drop any questions in the comments and I will be happy to answer them for you.